five, four, three, two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with a Shaggy Live for another episode. Uh, I know uh, some of you have been enjoying the episodes, and again, I would love to get back into the swing of things and at least do uh, one a week. And so I thought I would throw this one in. Now, this is a uh, this episode is going to actually be a uh, me kind of talking about a blog post that I've already done. So the blog post has been on uh, CurtisTucker.com, and it's under Journal and Seventies. And what I had done was, uh, you know, living here in Enid, where I grew up, I get to drive by a lot of my old uh, childhood homes that I grew up in. And uh, the one that I had the funnest in and was in the funnest period of the 70s for me, um, I kind of wrote a blog post kind of talking about how cool it's called The Groovy Pad I Grew Up In. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about tonight is uh, just some memories. And this is also kind of a cool episode. Um, If you love the 70s, um, you might enjoy this. And then also uh, kind of a fun episode for my daughters if they ever want to listen and listen to some of the wacky stuff I did as a kid there in the house. But uh, it's uh, 1902 West Broadway. Um, And so that's tonight's episode. If you guys are listening to this podcast, don't forget that you can go to youtube.com slash Curtis Tucker, and you can see me waving at you right now and watch these podcast episodes as vlogs. Or if you just happen to somehow catch this Uh, on the video on YouTube. You can also listen to these podcast episodes on most of all your favorite podcasting platforms and uh, just listen to those. And then what I also do is I take the video and the audio from the podcast and I embed them on the page with the blog on the website. So if you guys want to just go to the website and go down to the bottom of the page, you can click on the uh, podcast or the video and watch it there on your computer as well. So all kinds of different ways um, you guys can check that out. So I appreciate you guys checking in on all the other um, episodes and still trying to define what this podcast is going to be about. I, I think it's starting to lean towards... Uh, a personal journal and behind the scenes of of things going on. But again, this one's going to be uh, more about the memories of uh, what it was like living in our house in the 70s. So uh, I grew up mostly in the 70s with just my mom and my sister. My mom and dad got divorced. I believe I was about eight years old, which puts that right around uh, 1970. And so once they got divorced, we moved back to Enid, Oklahoma. And basically, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm I'm 99% sure that from the time my mom and dad got married, I don't believe they ever owned while they were, while they were together and while I was a kid all the way up until college. I don't believe my mom ever owned a house. Um, My dad was in the military, in the Air Force, so we got stationed on a lot of bases when I was a kid. And for a couple of years, we lived in Turkey and actually lived in a trailer on the Air Force base in Turkey. And then uh, we lived on a few other Air Force bases, and I think it was just housing was provided. I'm guessing there probably was some type of a rent or or possibly not. But um, so there never really was a big opportunity. F- and because my dad was getting moved a lot and we were going from base to base, um, I don't think there was ever really an opportunity for them to buy a house. And then once uh, my parents got divorced and my mom moved back to Enid, uh, she couldn't really afford a house by herself. I think it was cheaper to rent at that time. And I don't think she just knew a whole lot about buying a house. And so basically me growing up was basically living in rental houses. Luckily, um, she found some rentals that we ended up living at for quite a few years. And I don't know, let's see, I may, uh, looks like I've got on here that we lived in this house from 74 to 78. So that would be four years. So those uh, basically uh, 74 to 78. And so those were really the funnest years um, I had in the 70s. And part of the reason of that was from living in the house. And so um, 
my mom working a full-time job out at the Air Force Base, and then she also kind of got a part-time job at night, and especially on the weekends, she would work at the NCO club out at the base. My sister and I were latchkey kids in this house and also had a lot of time by ourselves living in this house on the weekends uh, without any parental supervision. And so uh, we moved into this house right before I started sixth grade. And so that was kind of a big deal because um, prior to sixth grade, I lived about only like four blocks further south, but that four blocks put me in kind of a whole different neighborhood. And so my early best friend, um, who I had throughout elementary school, we ended up getting put in separate classes in sixth grade. There was enough kids in our sixth grade at our elementary school that they divided it into two um, different classes. And I don't know what determined who got put in which one, but he, so my best friend at that time, he and I got separated. And, and what was kind of weird is I was, ended up moving to a further down the street, which put me in a different neighborhood. And it's like, I don't know if they divided it by neighborhoods. Maybe it almost seems like they did in, in some sense, because most of the guys that, almost all the guys that lived on West Broadway. So I moved over to West Broadway. And so most of the guys that lived on West Broadway were in the, in my sixth grade class. Whereas all of the guys that lived in the old neighborhood that I lived in were kind of in the other class with my, my other best friend. And so maybe that's how they divided it. So anyway, I kind of ended up uh, with a new best friend in sixth grade, which was Staten, who uh, I'm still best friends with today. And so that's kind of how we formed the whole West Broadway gang as we all lived there on West Broadway. And had I not moved uh, to West Broadway and had I not gotten into that other sixth grade class, my life would be uh, you just would not believe how much different it would be. I can't even imagine what it would be like, um, but it would be a lot different. So um, moving to that new house put me basically one block away from our elementary school. So I could literally look out my window and see our elementary school from my window. And so uh, the cool thing about that house was it was the first and only I'm trying to make sure, first and only two-story house that we lived in. And I don't know exactly how I ended up, um, but I ended up getting the top floor. So it was a three-bedroom house, two-bath, and the downstairs had two bedrooms and a bathroom, and the upstairs had one bedroom and a bathroom, but the upstairs also had a big game room and a walk-in closet. And so... Um, somehow I ended up being the one, even though my sister was older, um, I don't know if maybe she didn't want the upstairs. I can't really remember how all that went, but I got the upstairs all to myself, which was really, uh, pretty cool because the, the game room upstairs or the big room was big enough for a ping pong table. So I set up a ping pong table up there and had my bedroom. And then the cool, one of the cool things when I drive by the house, even today is, um, you know, one of these days, if, if it goes up for rent or something, I'll go in and take pictures. But so my bedroom upstairs was basically, let's say a, a, a square or a rectangle, but there was this one corner where there was a nook and it was just a little cutout. And in that nook, there was a window. And it just so happened that that nook was just wide enough for the end of a bunk bed to fit in it. And so when we first moved in, which was 74 in sixth grade, um, I still had a set of bunk beds that I uh, set up up there. I, I think I only had them for a year and then I went to a regular bed. But so, and even when I took the top bunk off, I think my bed the bottom part still fit in that nook. So the cool thing was, is I was able to lay in bed in that nook and open the window. And I did not have air, con that house did not have air conditioning. 
Um, and so to stay cool, I would either stick a fan in the window or I would just open the window to let the air in. But man, I remember spending a lot of time with my chin on the windowsill, looking out that window, watching cars drive by, looking down at the the uh, grade school. I could see my friends as they were riding bikes and skateboards coming to the house, but I spent a lot of time daydreaming looking out that window. And so when I drive by, uh, I always look up at the window and I think, man, you know, here I was a little kid uh, back in the 70s with these huge dreams looking out that window, and I never would have imagined that, you know, 50 years later, um, I would be driving by in my Jeep, looking up at that window, um, you know, reminiscing about how much time I spent up there. So um, I'm kind of looking at my blog post here. If I seem to be a little uh, distracted, I'm just trying to, I did not read over this. I I literally just uh, decided to do this episode at the last second. And so I'm kind of looking through my notes here to kind of guide me. Um, So the upstairs uh, had a bathroom. It wasn't the best bathroom, and it it had a claw uh, bathtub, so no shower upstairs. Now, this was uh, probably the only house we lived in that did have a shower. The shower was downstairs, and that may have been why my sister um, wanted to be downstairs. And so I actually took... Um, my showers downstairs, even though I had a bathroom upstairs because I just didn't want to take baths. And like I said, no air conditioning, but there was a huge heater in the big playroom. And then there was a little, one of those little bathroom heaters in the bathroom. And that was the only heat upstairs. My bedroom um, did not have any heat. So basically I would have just leave my door open and the heat from that big heater Um, would come in. And then also we had one of those uh, really cool 70s floor heaters where if you stood on with your tennis shoes, the grate would melt um, the grate design into your uh, shoes. We had one of those downstairs, and so that heat would make its way upstairs. And so I I don't remember ever being cold. Um, And then my walk-in closet uh, was really cool because uh, again, it was it was large enough to walk into, like like way big, but it was a really low ceiling, and it was in a part of the house where the roof went down on both sides, and so the ceiling was flat in the middle, but then it was angled on both sides. And at the end of the walk-in closet, there was these two little kind of half windows, and they kind of looked like the windows from the Amityville Horror House at the end of that house. They were kind of, they almost looked like eyes um, when you're outside looking out, and there was a chimney uh, that went down to the uh, first floor, which had like a a little um, gas heater in it. Um, But um, so anyway, it was kind of fun to always also look out those little windows Um, Because one of the little windows was right over the front door. And if you heard somebody knocking or one of your friends was coming, you could look out that little window and uh, see who was downstairs knocking on your door. And um, basically, it was all hardwood floors upstairs. Um, there, somebody had put an old piece of carpet down in the bedroom, and so that uh, covered most of my bedroom. Um, the p- big playroom was hardwood floor, but I think we put one of those 70s. Remember the 70s um, um, uh, oval-looking rugs that kind of were like braided? Um, I think I had one of those, a big one of those in that room, which kind of gave it a little bit of carpeting. Um, and so that kind of what, like I say, that was kind of the game room. I think I had posters and stuff on the walls in there. Um Walk-in closet, let's see, yep, I'm, I'm, God, it's funny how much I'm remembering without even having a look at this. Um, oh, and so that, and that was the house that um, you could get out, I would go out the windows on the north side, so basically the north side of the upstairs had a big window in the bathroom and then a big window in the playroom, and you could open those, and there was a a a bleh, short roof over the back porch of the house. So when you went into the house, there was a laundry room and a back porch, 
and the the roof on that was a lot lower than the rest of the house, but they were all connected. So, but I could get out onto the roof of the house by going out a window upstairs, and then you could climb up one of the peaks and get to the top of the house. And that's where um, State and I would get up there, and we would put a Frisbee down at the peak of the house, and we would slide down the valley towards the front of the house on a Frisbee because it was um, composition shingle. And, you know, right before you got to the edge of... uh, before you went off the roof, you would put your feet down and stop. And so that was the house that we slid down uh, on the Frisbee. And uh, I remember we did it enough that I think we we did wear a hole in the Frisbee. I hate to think what we did to the shingles up there. I'm sure we uh, rubbed those raw, but at the time, uh, I didn't know a whole lot about roofs and wasn't really thinking about that. So um, the backyard... Uh, had a wooden fence around it, and Staten and I had built a fort in the bushes back there, and so we spent a lot of time. Um, that was kind of in '74, was kind of our GI Joe phase, and so we did a lot of had a lot of GI Joe uh, stuff back there, and places where the GI Joes would hang out. And again, um, we had kind of cleared out an area in the bushes, and that we had kind of our own little fort back there. Um, Sometimes we would take little, we had the, we would find these little berries and I had a wrist rocket and we would shoot them at cars as they drove by. And there was one time that, um, these two guys, uh, probably uh, young college age guys came up and, uh, they basically kind of hollered through the fence and we were in the fort and, you know, we said, they said, Hey, what are you guys doing? And we said, Oh, just hanging out. And they said, do you guys, uh, have a, a, a slingshot in there? And we were kind of like, uh Oh. And so what had happened is we had shot one of those berries and we actually hit the passenger in the car. And so they had kind of gone around the block and parked and walked up to see what had happened. And, um, they weren't mad or anything. We didn't, they weren't there to beat us up, but, uh, they did want to, call us out on shooting them with that wrist rocket. And so um, luckily we didn't get in any trouble. They didn't tell any parents or anything. And uh, they just wanted to warn us that uh, the next guys that we hit might not be uh, as nice as we were. And so uh, that was also uh, one of the houses where I got to mow the lawn. Uh, For some reason, my mom always thought it was a better, and sometimes she would end up mowing the lawn, like if I was gone or something, because I spent the night a lot uh, away from home, but um, she always thought it was a good idea to have an electric mower, and when I say an electric mower, I mean electric mower that you had to plug into a, a wall, and so we had extension and we never had like the cool heavy duty orange extension cords we had like the skinny brown uh, cheesy extension cord so i would have to like connect different extension cords to get to the furthest part of the yard with this lawnmower and i i cannot tell you the number of times i ran over the electric cord and had to get um, electrician's tape and rewire uh, the electric cord. But uh, yeah, that was not fun uh, doing mowing the lawn with the extension cord uh, always in the way. And um, but I remember uh, one time in the backyard because nobody could really see it because of the fence and the trees and stuff. Uh, I went for several weeks without mowing. I, I left the design of a T, and so I would mow around it so the grass would grow really high where that T was, and then eventually, um, like after a couple of weeks, I mowed everything together, and because of the height difference and the way that I cut it and the, the way that the sun had been, you could see a T design in the backyard, and I thought that was kind of funny. I think I did it thinking maybe the Air Force... Uh, pilots that flew over were going to be able to see that. But uh, it was also, um, I remember my sister and her friends would sit out in the uh, webbed uh, layout chairs back there and put um, suntan oil on themselves, and they would get those reflective things and just 
crops burn themselves uh, out there in the summer. Uh, it was always fun um, sitting in our fort watching them sunbathe out there. Um, now the uh, walk-in closet was always a fun deal. I always, I never, it was never full of clothes. Um, it was just, it was so big. I, I, I would have never had enough clothes to fill it out. So I always made it into different things. I remember early on, my uncle helped me put two wall panels. We took two, you know, the old time paneling. We took two wall panels and like taped them together and set them flat and built a HO train track on on them and we even went as far as to like uh, use paper mache and made a mountain that had a tunnel through it so the train would go through the mountain. Um, I bought different little uh, town buildings and cars and gravel and I mean it was I had a I can't believe I don't have any pictures but I I had a really cool HO train set and you know we would spend a lot of time building that. And, and once it was built, you know, there wasn't a whole lot to do but add uh, buildings and stuff to it. But I'd spend a lot of time up there uh, running those trains um, over that track. And then eventually, as I got older, maybe a year or two down the line, we took the track up. And so then um, I would put Christmas lights in there and turn out the overhead light. And uh, we would make forts in there. Um, I would make pretend um, amusement parks, you know, like miniature amusement parks in there. And that's when I would build those roller coasters out of Hot Wheels track where I would run marbles down them and pretend that the marbles were the roller coaster. And then I'd also make other little, um, park rides and stuff. Um, but spent a lot of time in that closet doing all kinds of cool stuff. And, um, what else? Uh, all of the uh, got a lot of information here on the marble. Uh, it was really cool because you know you would set up two different Hot Wheel tracks um, that would both go down and they would both hit a loop. And then I had them both tracks would go into. I had some track from another, some other cars. It was really thick, uh, really wide black track. So once the marbles went down the Hot Wheels track they would both end up on the same track so that whatever marble was ahead um, would stay in the lead. And so basically it was kind of part roller coaster, part racetrack for my marbles. And uh, I had those zipped down. I spent hours building those tracks. Um, pulled a lot of pranks uh, when we lived in that house. Um, so my sister uh, had a phone. I didn't have my own phone, but my sister had her own phone. And, and she also had a lot of friends over and would spend the night and stuff. And so Staten and I would sneak down to her bedroom and sometimes hide under her bed or in her closet. And then when she uh, would get on the phone, we would listen to her conversation. And then sometimes she would let people, she would put the phone down and go to the bathroom or something. And Staten and I would uh, make noises and let people on the phone know that we were in the room and then my sister would come back in and the people would tell them that we were in the room. And then back in the day, uh, in the 70s, you know, we didn't have cell phones, but we had regular phones. And if you unscrewed the speaking part of the phone, there was this funny little thing that that caused the phone to be able to hear your voice. You could take that out and screw the thing back on. And uh, we would do that when my sister would leave the room. And then when she would come back and start talking, uh, people couldn't hear her because we had taken the, the speaker thing out of the phone. So that was always fun to do. Um, we'd always get in trouble. And uh, she would always chase us out of the bedroom and stuff like that. Um, what else did we do? One time she had a big party. Uh, in the backyard, and Staten and I climbed out on the roof, and we kind of spied on them from the roof uh, at her party. Uh, this was also the house that I was living in when I received my Farrah Fawcett poster, and so it was downstairs in this house. That at 14 years old, I enrolled that poster and eventually hung it upstairs. Uh, I don't remember exactly where I had it upstairs at that house. I do know that I had a bigger Farrah collection in the next house that we moved moved into in 78, which was over on Grant. Uh, it was a lot smaller house. But um, so I had my Farrah poster. 
uh, all kinds of fun stuff uh, on the walls up there um, at uh, 1902. It was a house that I remember coming home from school, uh, watching uh, the banana splits and eating zingers. And I remember uh, downstairs, we had like a little breakfast area that you could sit at and I would sit there and eat zingers and it had a window. And so I would always, so so if Staten was coming by, uh, if his mom was coming to pick me up, I would always stand there and watch out the window for when they pulled up in the driveway. And then I would run out and um, we would off be off to something. But that was another one of the windows where I spent a lot of time kind of staring out the window, but um, ate a lot of zingers uh, watching the banana splits there at that house. And that was also the house uh, I was living in when my mom... I, Staten played guitar when he the very first minute he moved to Enid. And so a couple of years later, we decided to possibly form a band, and I was going to learn to play guitar as well. And so my mom bought me a red Kalamazoo electric guitar, and that was a house that I was living in. Uh, when I got that electric guitar. It was also the house that I was living in when I was doing um, magic. And so that was the house that had the garage where Staten and I started our magic act. And we would go uh, put on magic shows in the garage and charge the neighborhood kids 25 cents to come see the shows. And I had gotten some dove pans as part of my act and actually had my mom's boss gave me two turtle doves. And so I used those doves. I raised, I had them upstairs in my room. And so uh, my room had this huge bird cage that had two turtle doves in it. And, uh, I never actually used the doves in the act because I never could get it to work quite right. But, um, I, I used them in practice and, um, I'd put them on my finger and, uh, if you clip their wings, they wouldn't really fly, but um, sometimes they'd fly around my room. So uh, there for a little while in that house, my pets were two turtle doves. Um, what else? Yeah, I don't even have that part on here. But yeah, so uh, State and I would do, uh, we did all kinds of fun stuff in that garage. Um, we did a lot of skateboarding. And so it had two sliding double doors. And if you slid them both in the middle, there would be an opening at each side. And, you know, while my mom was at work, the garage would be kind of empty. And so we would skateboard in a circle, you know, you'd go in one side into the garage, go through the garage and come out the other side onto the driveway. And then we would skateboard around the driveway. And we kind of made that our roller ball, uh, kind of pretended like we were, uh, members of roller ball, if you remember that movie. And, uh, and that also, that was a house where, I would borrow my mom's uh, Super 8. Well, I don't know if it was Super 8. It was an 8-millimeter camera and videoed Staten and I skateboarding and doing all kinds of goofy stuff. And that was also the house where uh, had our old Chinese pug that I'd had since I was a little kid. Um, his name was Mr. And so uh, we had Mr. there, and he was our old Chinese pug, but uh, always fun having him. And then... Um, It was also the house where, because my mom was working at the um, NCO club on the base on the weekends, we had, you know, we would go down West Broadway and play Musculins and and all that stuff with those those guys. But then every now and then we would come back to my house and there was a convenience store half a block behind my house that we would walk over to and we'd get candy bars. And that's where I bought Jolly Ranchers that I would take to junior high and sell. You know, I bought them for a penny, sold them for a nickel at junior high, but we would also buy a carton of eggs at that convenience store. And then on Friday or Saturday night, um, unfortunately, uh, for the drivers, we would throw eggs from my front yard in the bushes at cars that were driving down West Broadway. Uh, I'm surprised that we didn't ever get in huge trouble. I, obviously, we must have missed a lot of cars, or they didn't know that they had gotten hit. But uh, we would have kids from all over the neighborhood. They would come, and we would have tons of kids um, hiding in the bushes throwing eggs. And I think we threw water balloons sometimes. Um, but, um, yeah, 
a lot of weekends throwing eggs at cars and also uh, just had a lot of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, had a lot of friends spend the night, um, but Staten would spend the night a lot. Um, we would uh, use my tape recorder. We tape recorded a lot of funny, goofy stuff up there. We hadn't really officially started the band uh, while I lived in that house. I think the band didn't really officially start until I moved into the other house. So Staten and I would just kind of jam uh, with our guitars, but we recorded a lot of goofy stuff. Um, I would record uh, Dr. Demento on Sunday nights up there in that room in that house. And had I, I still have those cassettes, right? If you're if you're watching the video, just right in that room right there, I've got I've got those cassettes from 1970, uh, probably 74, 75, 76 of Dr. Demento, um, where I would just record those straight off of the radio. Uh, what else did we do up there? Um, oh, just uh, just had a lot. Of, I remember um, in sixth grade. There was a group. The there was a group of us. Not the entire class, although I think we invited the entire class. But there was probably about ten of us that would get together and we would have these parties at different a different person's house uh, through sixth grade, and we would just meet like on a Friday or a Saturday night, and there'd be chips, and we'd just listen to music. But um, one time. Uh, I invited everybody over to uh, my house, and so we hung out up there in the upstairs in that playroom and um, had a fun fun time there. Uh, also watched a lot of uh, Monty Python and Saturday Night Live uh, up there in the bedroom. And again, that was uh, in the 70s with out cable. There was no computers, no cell phones, and so we had three channels and uh, PBS, and so we watched a lot of, uh, watched the, the goodies, uh, Monty Python, things like that. So um, just a fun house to live in. Uh, the outside was kind of a weird um, shingle, yellowish shingle looking. Uh, if you go to the curtistucker.com website and get on the blog there and look on the journal, I do have a picture of the house and so it's kind of from the front and you can see uh, the window upstairs has a little air conditioner in it in the picture that air conditioner was not uh, in the house when I lived there and then when you look at the front of the house you can see the chimney and the two little windows those two little windows um, if you guys get on there and look are the windows to my walk-in closet and you can see how the roof kind of goes to the bigger part of the house and you can't really see the back roof where we actually climbed out on. But that area, if you look, um, the area above my walk-in closet there, that, the, that is the area that we would um, slide down on the Frisbee. It's not really a, a very long area. And then you can see there wasn't really a whole lot of a chance of us going off the edge because it kind of went to the area over... Um, a lower part of the house, and that lower part of the house with all those windows there in the picture is uh, was my mom's little art studio. Um, but then you can also see where one of the um, walk-in closet windows is right over the front door. And the front, there was kind of a front porch there, uh, just a concrete slab with uh, three little brick things. There were a whole bunch of bushes Um when I when I lived there, this this picture was taken just a couple of years ago, um, and I believe it's still a rental house. And then you can kind of see the garage in the back, the the wooden fence, and the all the bushes around the backyard is it's all gone. It's all completely cleared out, and the garage now has a more modern uh, garage door on it. Um, but uh, I guess my point on that was, it looks like. There was there would be no place to throw eggs from, but again, when I lived there, there was some more. There was a lot more bushes there in front that we could hide. Um, so anyway, uh, try to get on uh, curtistucker.com and uh, check out a picture. Uh, you know why? If you guys, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'm going to kind of step away from the audio uh, podcast and show. See if I can show this on the video.
for the people that um, are watching on the uh, video, they can see the house. So that, that way, uh, if you can't make it to the website, just go to the YouTube channel and you can see a picture of the house. But anyway, that was uh, 1902 West Broadway. Uh, that's where I lived. So uh, writing the book, uh, I am writing the book, uh, The Banana Seat Squad, about growing up on West Broadway with uh, four of my best friends. And we all lived on West Broadway. And this was the house that was the first, was, this was the furthest house to the west um, so and it was the furthest house from everybody. So everybody else's house. Most uh, Brendan, David, and Jason all lived to the east uh, down the street, and Jason was the furthest to the east. But he was only a block away from um, David and Brendan. And then there was a complete block in between Brendan almost two blocks between Brendan and Staten's house. And then there was a whole nother block between Staten's house and the elementary school. And then there was basically the elementary school took up a whole block. So you had that block and then a whole nother block before you got to my house. So I was um, one, two, three. I was three blocks away from Staten and he was basically two blocks away from Brendan. So I was like five blocks away. So I was the furthest away. So at night, uh, I always remember, um, you know, we were either on skateboards or on our banana seat bikes. And, you know, we would be out till, you know, we very, very seldom had to go home when the street light came on. Um, we usually got to stay out a little bit later. So it might be, you know, as kids, it might be 10 or 11 on a Friday or a Saturday night. And we would all five be together down, like kind of uh, playing musculins on David's block. And uh, when we got done playing, everybody would go home. And so Staten and I, everybody, uh, the other three or everybody else in that area would just go right into their house. They'd be home basically immediately. Well, Staten and I had to go kind of by ourselves, you know, the extra two blocks to his house. And so if I wasn't spending the night with him, or he wasn't spending the night with me, um, he would go into his house, and then I had another three blocks at night. Uh, not super dark. I mean, the uh, Broadway, West Broadway was lit up uh, pretty well with streetlights, but um, it was still a little bit scary uh, being the only kid out and riding your bike, and so I would, like, book it, man. I would ride. I remember pedaling super fast down the street, and I would go past our grade school, and basically get home and uh, throw my bike in the garage and, and get inside as quick as I could. Um, so that was always fun. But, uh, but anyway, that is the house that I grew up in that I'm going to be writing the book about. Lots of uh, fun memories. I can't, uh, I'm sure there's like a, a bazillion other memories um, of living in the house uh, that I will probably have in the book. But so once you're, if you're reading the book or seeing the movie when it finally comes out, uh, that is the house that I lived in when all of that exciting stuff. So I was living in that house in 1977, which will be the year uh, that the book is about. And so uh, fun stuff. You guys uh, appreciate you guys listening. It's just been one of those personal journal episodes. Um, go to curtistucker.com and you can read uh, a portion of this uh, episode there, or you can see or listen to the episode there, or go to your favorite podcasting app. If you're watching this on YouTube, or if you're listening to this on your podcasting app, you can go to YouTube and watch the video. Um, you guys can hit me up. I've got two emails uh, for this podcast. I've got shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. You guys can email me there and uh, let me know some of your show ideas or what you think about the show. And I will be trying to think of another episode. I'll try to get on track and do, um, I don't even know what, you know, each episode, there's not going to be any central theme. It's just going to be maybe what's going on uh, behind the scenes of Shaggy Duck or Enid Buzz or basically what uh, what I'm I'm up to. Um, next week will be a week ahead of the, um, eclipse. And so in two weeks, 
Uh, the episode will be about uh, the April 8th eclipse. Now, I have done an episode on the eclipse in 2017, but it'll be fun to compare and see how this eclipse went. So next week, I'm not sure what uh, the subject matter will be. If you guys have something you want me to talk about, go ahead and email me and let me know. Otherwise, you guys have a great evening, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya! See ya!